What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Saturday, May 25th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up, our special weekly recap. I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. First off, happy Memorial Day weekend, everybody. It's a busy week. We had a lot of great stories. A lot of great stories, man. It's a lot of big fun. Absolutely. We appreciate everybody who stuck with us for the week. We're about to roll over some of our top stories. From the week, um, the team does a great job of picking out some of the ones that have got the most um, kick. Um, what's on the docket, Stu? You you just released an episode uh, with Troy Eckert? Yeah, yeah Troy Eckert. And uh, also Doug Sandridge and I are talking about the Osage um, uh, wind farm problem up in Oklahoma. So we will, be, we will have done that live on Friday. That'll be great. So go ahead and, and check that out, guys. Um, pretty unbelievable. You can also check out uh, my latest episode seven of the deal spotlight with Bennett Williams. We're covering uh, the Exxon Chevron Hess uh, merger debacle. That is Guyana and the Stabroic block. Um, but guys, as always, before we cut in, just thank you to the energy news beat um, team, the energy news beat, uh, dot com, which uh, is the proud provider of all the news and quote analysis that you hear Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business i'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to the team though have a great memorial day weekend guys we'll see you on monday hey let's start off with uh the buddies over here at penguin empire who's paying for free energy wind or as penguin empire reports who's paying for lunch michael there are no free lunches and I, I absolutely love what they did. Let me tee this up a little bit. Uh, when you sit back and, and, and try to think, Michael, there's a, a fallacy out there that wind is free. Wind energy is free. It's not free. And who's paying for it? And so I did not understand some of the things in here. Uh, Ms. Producer, if you could bring up the four technology trends chart it's coming up. It says turbine capacity, rotor uh, diameter, and hub height have all increased significantly over the long term. Michael, I didn't understand this, uh, really taking a look at it. In the United States, 2022, the average uh, newly installed was 3.2 megawatt. That's 7% and three uh, than larger than in 2021 but it's up 350% since 1999. That is just, those are huge. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, with, if you haven't seen a wind farm in person, I'd highly recommend going and finding one because the physical footprint of these things are unbelievable. If you haven't driven down a road before and seen, you've got the, the, the truck in front of them, that's the, you know, watch out wide load. That's a mile above because then you've got these trucks that just are carrying one blade that are taking up two lanes on a highway. You've got the other service vehicle behind. So the they're really a huge footprint relative to um, – Relative to, say, an oil and gas well, I mean, heck, if you have an opportunity, our friends over at Pecos Energy and RT, I've been out to their well site multiple times. The footprint of their well, and then in the background, you can see a wind farm. It's unbelievable. You'll be shocked. You're like, wait, wait, I'm on an oil, I'm in an oil field. Right. But yet the physical footprint of this field is drastically lower than the three windmills or wind farms that are behind them outstanding point and you you teed it up perfectly michael even without a you know for our uh, podcast listeners at home i'm going to pay him after this podcast because miss producer if you could bring up the uh slide that says it is the one the second one down that has the this gas plant doesn't need all those multiple steps i'll tag it in there for you there are that you can see in the lower right hand corner it says 103 uh, megawatt gas power plant look at how small that is then you go up to the next three sections across each of those are sections michael look how much land that is taking up compared to one natural gas plant isn't that crazy well, That's yeah, absolutely. And that that uh, 103 megawatt gas plant is the amount of power 
that that is going to, or the amount of things that that powers relative to even that wind farm up there is unbelievable. And the gas power is dispatchable. Exactly. Uh, and, and so that one single graphic for anybody that is understanding what a section of land is, that is just unbelievable. It's a uh, mile by mile. Mile by mile on that, baby. Uh, and then uh, in this also, there's table six. We don't need to bring that up because it's pretty detailed, but it has a really amount of tonnage that is required for each windmill. And we're, here's where I want to give a shout out for what I'm trying to understand in, in making money, and that is land reclamation after wind farm death. Wind farms uh, do not last 30 years. They, they're they lucky if they last five to eight before they have to be reworked in order to get to maintenance uh, without having all that. That's a whole nother story. Here's where I want to get into Who's paying for the land reclamation of these horrible uh, land uh, problems at the end of these things? We'll be talking about that more and with videos later on. This one, if you're going to have tariffs, Chinese companies should not benefit from the EV critical mineral tax credit. Michael, you can't buy this kind of stupid. No wonder... You know, you've got great companies like uh, I interviewed the CEO and the president, two different uh, two different people at the, different times from Frere Brat Battery out of Norway. They're taking advantage of the Inflation Reduction Act, and I applaud that. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. They have renewable battery technology that makes sense. This does not. Let's go into this here. According to Joe Manchin, the key author of the tax credit, a core reason for disqualifying that batteries with uh, any mi minerals from foreign entities of concern from that tax credit was good bad actors, namely China, benefiting from the tax credit. Uh, moreover, the current tradition of the for, uh, uh, definition of the foreign entity of concern only deems an entity of foreign entity of concern if engaged from the extraction processing or recycling of such material in a covered nation. Here's where it also does not cover that, Michael. And that is what about the batteries coming in from the new plants that they're putting in uh, in Mexico to undermine the EVs uh, for the U.S. manufacturers? This is a mess. Yeah, it really is a mess. And I think it goes, but it... it 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 goes to show that the you know you have to be very careful when you offer direct tax incentives there's going to be a market for people to come in and attempt to undermine them so i'm glad they're taking the step and at least making sure that chinese companies can't and especially these bad actors can't take advantage cuz what are they trying to do they're trying to come into the electrical vehicle market and lower the price cuz they can come in and right. offer much much lower vehicle costs because they've done a good job over the last 15 to 20 years of shoring up the supply chain which you know, if, if you want to go back to why EVs are so expensive in the first place, it's because the supply chain is highly fractionalized. These critical minerals are extremely expensive to both get out of the ground. We've, we've talked at nauseum about, you know, the the human rights abuses that are happening from countries like Congo and other places in which they are uh, grabbed from. But that still means that and, and still, even though you're making a dollar a day with an axe and your baby on your back to mine these, they're still coming out to be, you know, tens of thousands of dollars um, just for one battery to come out and and fund these things so it's unbelievable i i'll applaud what jenner uh what senator joe manchin is doing here um at least trying to carve out this function oh i i agree and, and i applaud anybody standing up for america i don't care yes. if you're a democrat i don't care if you're a republican look out for america first no absolutely uh man, whatever happened to uh um, Fetterman's happened at a mansion right now. Oh, oh, I loved Fetterman. I, I, I did you see his quote? He's he, had so many of them. I, I swear, I think if a conspiracy theory was about was ever there, it's him. I think it's not the original Fetterman. I think they put a body double in because he's smarter, he's <laughs> better looking. I don't know what happened, but when he said, "I, I, uh, I apologize." Or I, I originally said Congress was like uh, 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 going to a Jerry Springer show. 
I now have to apologize to Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Hats off to Fetterman. I, I you know, hey, I, I, I now I'd even love to visit with him on the podcast. If you're listening, you know, Senator Fe, uh, Fetterman, we're gonna be uh, talking to uh, Senator Cruz here pretty quick, so might as well follow up with a Fetterman. Drowning in sewage. I love the title of this one. Drowning in sewage yep. and dumping money in a climate rat hole. Um, net zero. This is the tagline that's in the in the the subheading is net zero will have zero effect on the climate and threatens devastating consequences for the supply of affordable and reliable electricity. Michael, this one is really a great article, and uh, the Thames when you is filled with sewage, but yet it's a global problem. This is disgusting. Um, the company was fined 3.3 million pounds after causing the death of 1,400 fish with the release of millions of liters of untreated sewage. Um, the aging sewage infrastructure can't handle the demands of a growth population. Well, then stop the illegal migration is what I've got to say. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, in Bangladesh... Uh, the Link Rivers can capital can receive 60,000 cubic meter of waste from nine major industrial carriers. The river is so toxic that locals consider it biologically dead. In wow. New Delhi, the capital of India, the Yama, uh, Yama River has been heavily affected by the disposal of harmful chemicals and untreated sewage. Michael, it seems to me that we would spend better time cleaning up renewable plastics, cleaning up uh, sewage, mm -hmm. turn our waste to energy than it would be to go to net zero. Yeah, I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I think the other the climate change debate, in my opinion, is a lot of hand waving of look over here when there's a lot of other problems, you know, over here. You know, we didn't mention the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is one of the biggest dumping grounds in the entire, uh, you know, look that up. If you're if you're by a computer right now, Google um, Google the Great Pacific Garbage Patch absolutely will blow your and mind. And I talked to Dr. Patrick Moore about that. Uh, in my one of my two hour, I had two two hour podcasts with him. Mm. So, uh, yes, um, there is a lot, and then also Captain Kelly, uh, who is uh, a wonderful reach around the world for cleaning plastics out of the 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 world's ocean. He is a dynamo on doing that. So, yeah. no, we, the point of all that is, I think this article does a great job of saying yes. well, the real issue and where, you know, where we're going to see much more universal health standard increases is by cleaning up a lot of the river pollution that's going on and not necessarily worrying about what's going on in the climate. Yes, obviously, we need to, you know, worry about, quote unquote, what's going on in the climate. But Bjorn Longberg talks about this. I mean, there are oh, yes. tons of other issues that come before climate change that we need to worry about this being one of them. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I, you know, climate change, man-made climate change does happen. Now, there's a whole argument on how that happens. But what can we do to affect life? And and everything else, let's let's quit worrying about net yeah. zero and clean yeah. up our act. Questions the de debate moderators need to ask presidential candidates about their uh, American energy plans. A one of the questions should be, "Are you alive?" Uh, <laughs> I, did I just say that? Um, yeah. Since all the hospitals, airports, and communications, militaries, planes, trains, and vehicles are all based on products made from fossil fuels, what is your plan to avoid a transition to lifestyles that existed before the 1800s? What a great question. You know, if we go to net zero and we ruin the energy policies, there's two different things. Another thing is, Electricity is not uh, um, petrochemical things made from petrochemicals. Uh, and so we have to sit back and take a look. Is it actually petrochemicals 
Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, is it plastics? Is it life-saving drugs? Is it uh, a windmill cannot make a pharmaceutical drug? Does not happen. But you need oil and gas to make other things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, there's a great list of questions here. We could go through oh. and read all of them. Unfortunately, with CNN hosting the debate, then no one's ever going to ask this one, unfortunately. I think one of the key questions is, you know, you know, th there was this, you know, th there's one in the middle here with ongoing efforts to shutter coal-fired power plants, natural gas power plants, and nuclear power plants. How do you plan to support the needs for continuous, uninterrupted supplies of electricity? That's a question that should be asked. And maybe you could frame it more as baseload energy. That's the right. key to this whole thing. How are we going to keep having baseload energy? Exactly. Here's another question. How will electricity generated from wind and solar be able to support the materialistic demands of humanity or, uh, or before we chastise big oil for impacting climate change? Uh, I want to add one more thing to that. Uh, they're suing now big oil for climate change. You know, you got to be kidding me. All mm -hmm. these lawsuits, the lawfare is going nuts on big oil. Electric vehicles. I'm going to read straight from the article here. 2024 has not been kind to the electric vehicle market, particularly in the United States. Sales are down. Tesla has laid off staff and EVs have been caught in the political crosshairs. The future of transportation may still be electric, but the recent struggles underscore the market's role in determining that future. This, this article goes on uh, to highlight, one, that Yahoo Finance poll uh, that we talked about yesterday. They found 50% of respondents were unlikely to purchase a EV. They also talk about another Gallup poll that was actually in March of 2023. They found 41% of adults would not purchase an EV, while only 43% might consider opposition among Republicans is also much stronger, 76%, according to that Yahoo poll, and 71%, according to that Gallup poll, responded they would not buy an EV. There's, there's two things that are happening right now. First, it's just the overall cost assessment. Right now, it's becoming it's it's not economical for these companies, or not, and not for the companies per se, but for consumers to actually purchase these EVs. Um, there, there was a Department of Energy study that was done by their national laboratory out in Chicago. Uh, they did this quote unquote cost assessment of purchasing, and now I'm going to start reading straight from the article: purchasing and operating electric vehicles compared to hybrid and gas powered cars. The authors found that compact cars, mid sized cars, and SUVs were cheaper than the lowest cost comparable. EV, even if owned for 15 years, even including um, some upgraded technology, uh, technological innovations and cheaper commodity prices could make EVs uh, make EVs owning or owning EVs more economical. But the upfront cost down is critical. Of course, the upfront cost is going to be key. Anything. They also point out that beyond the economics, both politics and policies are 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 kind of affecting it we talked about the tariffs that 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 Joe Biden has has just implemented now he also he's following up on what Trump has done which was you know massive tariffs and stuff coming in from China that's not going to make products here at home cheaper unfortunately because a lot of the cheap uh products that we're getting do come from overseas so you're beginning to see a little bit of a uh, look over here we love cheap stuff oh but we also want to make sure that um we we don't take too much and we don't enrich China people you know this article also points out that the EV tax credits aren't necessarily quote unquote equitable not a big fan of that term but they point out that three that households making three hundred thousand dollars annually can still qualify for this 750 fifty dollar tax credit um basically that means it just goes to people that don't need the tax credit if there's any people that need tax credits it's the lower cost people um you know I also love this quote here because of price thresholds and domestic content requirements, only 22 of the 110 EV models sold in the U S qualify for the tax credit. So even if you want to use the tax credit, there's only about less than 20% of all EVs on the market actually qualify for the tax credit, which is absolutely unbelievable. It goes to show you that, you know, at the end of the day, the consumer will reign and EVs are getting pitched. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. As we've said on this show many times, I am for hybrids. I think hybrids are going to be the future where you have a combination of a combustion engine along with backup battery storage. I think that's also where personal consumption will go. So we will be following that. Texas oil regulator flags endangered species designation. I, I got to hand it to this. This is a, a kind of a funny one. 
Uh, only in Texas. You got to love it. Uh, Wayne Christensen uh, actually came out and says, th this is a quote, the new EPA ruling on this stupid lizard, excuse me, did I say stupid? I didn't mean to insult any lizards that are possibly listening out there. This doesn't have a thing to do with saving lizards. It's about shutting down U.S. oil and gas production to win political brownie points, which will only increase inflation and jeopardize billions of lives globally, said our Railroad Commissioner Christian uh, Wayne Christian said in the statement. I'm going to hand it to him. He's dead on right. Go, Wayne. I like it. Yeah, I mean... I'm not the biggest Wayne Christensen fan for a bunch of different reasons, but I think what he's what he's but doing is actually calling better, out Michael. this. This What's one's up? even better. It doesn't matter if it's a lizard, a chicken, a whale, or a unicorn. Radical environmentalists won't be satisfied until we get our all of our energy from firewood and are living in a cave again. I'm sorry. That was the first thing I've really heard from him that I liked. <laughs> yeah, two things. Blind mice find cheese once in a while. And if they're going after whales, we know I'm all for it. Um, you know, the, I mean, he is right about this. Again, I'm not, you know, just because of just because my feelings about Wayne Christensen aren't the best. What he is calling out is something that's great, is that this, you know, this United States Fish and Wildlife um, announcement that this dune sagebrush lizard is going to be um, classified as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act is is clearly a, a political you know a political framework attempting to shut down majority of oil gas development here in the state oh it's unbelievable and and uh, uh our good buddy out there uh mike uh in california was sitting there and his video went nuts when we interviewed him about how much extra work he had to do to go out and look and look under some sagebrush out in california and go mr lizard hello yep we love it's ourselves some good Mike really, Umbro. Yeah, Mike Umbro. There's a thousand of these little things out there. Yep, absolutely. Oh.